welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Christoph Gugula from Westlake Epoxy. I am a team leader at R&D Composites uh, located in Duisburg, Germany. And I would like to present to you the newest development of our company in preform binary technology, and that is the Epicode Text Fix, challenging the status quo in preform binary technology. But before I do that, I would like to make an announcement, namely, Hexion Coatings and Composites division is now since uh, February 2022 Westlake Epoxy. We have been bought uh, by Westlake Corporation and we are now a part of a bigger and proud family of, of Westlake that has been established in 1986 in uh, Houston, Texas. We are now around 16,000 members and uh, we are very happy to, to be part of Westlake because that also gives us access to the raw materials that are necessary in the production of epoxy resins, and that's for example caustic soda and chlorine derivatives, which gives us better vertical integration. And on the Westlake epoxy side, we are a proud company with a long um, standing innovation in epoxy resins, starting from all the way from Bacchelita synthetics in 1989 which then merged with Borden Chemical and Shell Chemicals in 2005 to form Hexion. And meanwhile, we have been on the forefront of innovation with uh, our track resins, for example, the Epicota track um, fast cure RTM systems that are now widely used in, automotive, uh, in the automotive branch, followed by Epon Flamex systems that are infusible and flame retardant resins used, for example, in aerospace. And more recently, we have our first system, Epicode 600, qualified for aerospace structural um, parts. And we are proud to continue this tradition under the Westlake umbrella as Westlake Epoxy. But now back to the topic on preform binders. And um, we would like to first, of course, acknowledge that the preform binder technology has gone a long way since the onset of composites in RTM, LCM, and infusion technologies. However, we believe that both the technology and the parts made with these technologies have advanced a bit further and faster. And meanwhile, um, you people would like to have bigger preforms, uh, more monolithic preforms that go many meters in length. They require to have a better weathering, hot wet resistance than before. The processing te uh, technology has increased in temperature quite significantly. Now you would re routinely um, infuse systems at the curing temperature of, for example, 180 degrees C or even more. And last but not least, um, you would probably like your preforms to be easily placeable in the tool. So it needs to be compacted very well close to the Final, um, final thickness of the part. And for those of you who are not aware uh, what exactly could go wrong with a preform binder with respect to the part performance, um, I would like to present you a um, case study here. Even if we have a perfect binder application, a perfect preform that's very well compacted, there are still some things that can go wrong. Namely, the first and foremost is that you can see on the right side, you can have a, an effect called washout. When you inject your resin and along the throw front, you will see that the binder gets dissolved and washed away from, this, from its position. And you will probably have a gradient of uh, properties along the big parts. Secondly, even if you manage to keep the binder in place, there is still a chance that the binder itself will impact the network of your epoxy resin that could form a, an individual uh, face and you will see that in the performance of your final part. And how do we know that? Well, we measured uh, several parameters, mainly washout you can easily see if you cut a sample from an onset of your flow front, the injection port, and then take one at the vacuum uh, side, you will see probably that there is a difference in uh, TG when you measure the DMA, and that's typically how we define washout, that we know that the binder impacted the thermomechanical properties of the final part. Also, if the binder uh, dissolves in the resin, that means 
it increases the viscosity typically and also lowers your pot life, which you see on the middle screen, on the middle picture. And that means you may eventually either run out of pot life or have issues, for example, with um, porosity in your final part. Last but not least, uh, typically the current reactive binders, um, they tend to impact the TG of the injection resin, and you see that on the right picture as a kind of a second TG transition, uh, which is typical, typically much lower if you are using high performance resins, and this problems, problem gets exacerbated even more when you measure hot wet performance, and you will see that TG is now basically halved of your original one. So for example, from 200 degrees, you end up with something that has a TG of around 120. And that's a big problem, of course, for many. Um, so what are we trying to do here exactly? Well, if we look at the current binder offerings uh, for, for typical RTM, RCM processes, so powder binders, we have several uh, options. We would either use, for example, reversible epoxy binders. We could use curing epoxy binders. You could, we could use thermoplastics. All of them have their pros and cons. The thermoplastics and reversible epoxies, you can preform as many times as you like. They do not cure. Um, of course, epoxies will be compatible with injection resins that are also epoxy-based. Thermoplastics, if you have an incompatible binder that's, for example, polyamide, it's not going to wash because uh, yeah, it's, it's not miscible with epoxy. On the other hand, all of them have their drawbacks, uh, and depending on application, you may see a significant impact on your part performance. For example, reversible binders are typically prone to washout that I've just mentioned. You cannot hot demold them. If you take a curing binder, you actually may see issues with the demolding, uh, sorry, with uh, preform compaction because they cure faster than they can compact. And thermoplastics, of course, they will not provide as much stiffness because you have long flexible molecules. They can, um, take up significantly more water, and some of them have to be activated at a higher temperature. So what we are trying to challenge here with Epico TextFix platform is we want as much as possible of the perks, the left side, and as little to know as possible from the right side, so the drawbacks of these binders. And how do we do that? Uh, we have two offerings, namely the Epico TextFix 602, which is a curing binder, and Epico TextFix 603, which is a reversible binder. Both of them have been designed around solving the washout issue, improving the stiffness or handling of the large preforms, and we made sure that the binder will not impact the performance of your final parts by checking the mechanical uh, performance on the interface. And eventually, we believe we solved the compaction issues that the customers might be facing. And how we did we do that? Well, if we look at the washout issue, the main problem with washout uh, is it's, it's uh, not something that uh, there is no standardized method to wash it, uh, to, to measure it. So we, need to, we needed to develop our own. And for that, uh, we looked also at the mechanical performance, if we could uh, have a correlation there. But we found that uh, while there is a definite, there is definitely an impact on the mechanical performance, the correlation is not easily quantified. So we quantified washout based on the TG decrease along the flow front. And we did that both in infusion and RTM processes. Infusion, other rather mild for us, 120 degrees C and RTM at 180 degrees C. And because we wanted to kind of exacerbate the problem as much as possible, we made sure that uh, for infusion we have no flow mesh, so uh, we basically go only in the in-plane infusion, and so we wash out as much binder as possible. And in RTM, we went with the fiber volume content all the way to 65%, so that we run out of uh, pot life just about right so that we can see a small uh, dry spot and we would take samples around that spot to know where we have the most washout possible. And what we have seen is that if you take the reactive binder, the Epico TextFix 602, you have basically a halving of the washout phenomenon in the RTM process which is a significant improvement. And if you go in fusion, you would just see a quarter. And this is, of course, under very uh, difficult conditions. So in a normal part, you probably wouldn't see an impact at all. 
and the reversible binder is a perfect um, example for infusion processes when you can go a bit lower with the temperature, for example, 120 degrees C, and you will still see at least halving of this issue. And more importantly, if you look on the right picture, the, both the 602 and TextFix 603, neither of them will, will show the second TG transition in the DMA. So they both, if you run a TG measurement via DMA, you will see that both of them look basically like if you had no binder at all with respect to the uh, shape of the curve. Um, the second part was, well, we wanted to improve the stiffness of the preforms because they tend to be bigger and bigger and they undergo bending um, uh, stress. So we basically took samples and we measured these bending stresses and we noticed that we get a significant improvement in both cases, especially if you want to preform at lower temperature because you would like to save some energy, for example, or you are not able to go as that high and you would basically double or even increase it even more. And um, especially the reactive binder would then also be very suitable for hot demolding on a press. The second part of the problem, especially for uh, non-reactive or reversible binders, is if you have to pre preform very thick stacks or you have several preforming steps, you go up to a certain temperature and at some point you may overheat the binder that it basically causes the binder to penetrate through the layers and you lose adhesion. And that is basically solved with both our reactive and reversible binders because they both show a much higher viscosity and viscosi better viscosity development than typical ones. So we really tried to, to, to get this adhesion loss, but we were so far unsuccessful, at least until up to temperatures of around 160 degrees C. And the third and foremost, probably for many, um, we get a lot of questions from customers, how would the binder impact part performance? And we mostly looked at the interface, so the, the, um, between fibers and the resin, of course, and we measured uh, interlaminar shear strength, um, in-plane shear, and toughness, mode one, mode two, G1, C, G2, C, and we saw basically no difference between a benchmark standard epoxy binder and the two variants that we have developed. Also, depending on the quantity of binder you use on your textiles, you may actually see an improvement in toughness if you use the 603 reversible binder. So you can impart additional performance on your parts. And last but not least, um, we looked at the compaction issues and uh, this is a bit tricky topic. It's very difficult to measure. So here we partnered with the German Aerospace Center, the DLR Institute, who have a very sophisticated setup for measuring the preform thickness while, allow, while also being able to uh, preform and apply pressure. Then basically they have a laser sensor that measures the thickness, so they are very, very accurate in their assessment. And you can look um, at the preforming process in several steps. First you have a th thick stack that is just uh, a layup uh, of, of the fibers one upon each other. Then you would apply pressure and temperature and that's where you, you have the most compaction. Typically no issues there, you will be able to reach easily 60% fiber volume content or so. The problem appears when you um, stop applying vacuum and temperature, you will see that the preform gets a little bit thicker and there is a relaxation process that it gets a little bit thicker with time. And basically, Usually after 24 hours, this process then stops and you have your final thickness. And this is exactly the part that we measured. We waited the 24 hours and measured the fiber volume content of those preforms. And we found out a significant improvement, again, against a standard reversible binder. With the reactive binder, you can go all the way up to around 55% if you increase the quantity a bit. And that's where you would be if you make a standard infusion uh, process. And with the reversible binder, you can go around 20. Uh, we have reached around 53%. But here you have the added benefit is that you can either preform longer or at a higher temperature to give the binder more time to compact the fibers. 
most importantly, this was all done at vacuum pressure. So just one bar. If you require higher compaction, you can easily reach that with a press and, and higher uh, pressures there. So we basically believe that uh, with this compaction level, you will be able to manipulate your preference very easily and put them in the tools without any additional work included. So basically, we believe we have a really good offering with the Epico TextFix platform. And it's not really just one thing that stands out, but a sum of its parts. And the sum of its parts is we were looking not only at the binder performance, we also looked at the preform performance, and we looked at the final part performance. So when you use Epico TextFix, you don't only solve washout, compaction, you also make sure that there are no impact on mechanicals, and you can make very stiff preforms at a very wide temperature range and be it in a press or, or just under vacuum. And again, if you use the reversible binder, you may even impart a little bit of toughness on your final part. So of course, when you decide to partner with Westlake Epoxy, you don't just buy a white powder. You also join a cooperation with a company with a long and proud tradition in uh, base epoxy resins and thermoset solutions, who is, we are completely vertically integrated in the vertical chain. We also make uh, sizing components. We work with uh, industrial partners on the fiber side. We work with industrial partners on binder application and also preform manufacturing. We offer customer and technology support on every stage of the production and development, also in serial production, all the way from preform manufacturing uh, up to tiers and OEMs. And that concludes my today's presentation. Thank you for listening. On the picture, you see how I look on a good day. On the right side, you have my contact details. Please feel free to drop me a call or an email. Also, if you are more a seeing is believing type of person, please feel free to visit us at our booth, Westlake Epoxy. You just walk down the aisle, and when you see that people are starting to give you jealous looks, you basically reach the Westlake Epoxy booth, and that's G52. Thank you very much, and I think we have time for some questions. Thank you, very interesting uh, presentation. Um, just one question, are the binders uh, epoxy based and are they compatible with other resin systems apart from epoxy as well? Yes, th these indeed are all epoxy based binders. Uh, we see no issue in combining them with uh, other systems than epoxy. However, that's something that uh, should be checked on a case to case basis. Uh, we were mostly focused on epoxy systems. We had some, some, some questions about, uh, for example, polyester, I think. I mean, they would definitely fix, fix the textiles, and I don't think they will be uh, any, any draw, you will have any drawbacks versus other, other epoxy-based binders. For those a bit shy uh, with questions, at the Westlake booth, we also have free coffee and free drinks, so please join us. We are more than welcome to share. <laughs> and if there are no more questions, again, thank you very much for listening. Um, we have some preforms. If you would like to check how they work, again, please visit us. Otherwise, I have to bring them back home, and that's going to be a difficult job to do because they're quite big. Thank you.